Uh, Sean and I were discussing what to do with our remains yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, I was trying to tell him I want to go like swing by that little park by Grandma. Yeah. I was like, but the headstones, they're really cool, because they say things like, was eaten by a grizzly bear. <laughs> and if I go out in such a fashion, like eaten by a grizzly bear, you know, I would like that on my tombstone. <laughs> Followed by a whale. So I was researching haunted houses, and I found, well, I was it had, like, this house was famously haunted. It had a list of all the notable historical moments in it. And there was okay. one from 1902. Where the owner had died by what they listed as, in quotes, demonstrating an automobile. <laughs> so, so if I die in a car wreck and there's someone else in the car with, I don't want to say that I, I died in an accident. I want everyone to say I died demonstrating an automobile. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> You should do that over with less slurring. It was really a It was my speech impediment coming back from a child. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Booze and Spirit Podcast. Booze and Spirits Podcast. It's like a drink with death. <laughs> Line. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome again to the Booze and Spirits Podcast. I am amazed you guys came back, but we appreciate you. We <laughs> appreciate you so very, very much. <laughs> I'm your host, Nick McDonald. I'm your other host, Kate McDonald. And uh, we are, we're pretty excited that we actually had listeners for our first podcast. We're excited that we felt it was worth our time to put together a second podcast. <laughs> I was excited we got a follower that wasn't anyone that I knew. Yeah. Well, the recipes got a lot of likes on the website. Not one of my finer recipes either, but... Well, I don't know. <laughs> simple. YouTube is... Uh, you can monetize it after you have a 1,000 subscribers and 400 hours of playtime. We're away from that. Um, no, we just have to go into Walmart and get the mirror out of the back of Walmart, and we break it, and then we get the money from YouTube, right? <laughs> I think you're making. This is how they did it on South Park. You're mixing up episodes. <laughs> that was how you kill a Walmart, not how you get the money. Okay, fine. <laughs> if this is your first time listening, um, we'll be we'll be gentle. I'll spit on it first. Don't worry. You just lay back and relax. I've got nothing to add to that. I'll improve that. So I'm just going to move on. <laughs> on today's episode, uh, we have some lighthouse stories because everybody loves a good haunted lighthouse. And all lighthouses are haunted. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and I'm making whiskey drink because we're Scottish. Yay, whiskey. Would you like to hear about the new London Ledge lighthouse? Pass. Pass? No, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm, no, yes, tell me. <laughs> tell me everything. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, traditional lighthouses, they're usually on a rocky outcrop, big old spiry, white castle, towery things, right? There's white castle in That's, the lighthouse? Well, not white castle. White tower, well, I, mean, I it's meant. East Coast lighthouses, I guess it's possible. Now I'm hungry. Right, keep going. <laughs> so the uh, New London Ledge lighthouse is quite unlike all of those. It is on a man-made platform. And rather than the traditional spire design, it was made in the style of a three-floor, 11-room mansion, much like the homes nearby on shore at the time. Just hmm. with the addition of a large light bell on top. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of pictures of it that you can find online. It's rather interesting. It's just basically a mansion sitting on the water out in the middle of the channel between East Long Island and uh, Connecticut. I'll take one. <laughs> Construction on the lighthouse was finished in 1909, and from then on it was operated by teams of three or four men from the nearby shore. In 1939, it was taken over by the Coast Guard, and it was automated in 1987. Now, 
the lighthouse has a history of... Wait, 1987? 87. It was automated. 1987. 1987. Like, I was alive when they finally automated this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They didn't have a lot of lighthouse computers in up before. New Jersey, so known for its technology. <laughs> so the lighthouse. Come for the garden, stay for the technology. It's not Jersey. It's on the Connecticut side of New York. It's it's on the other side of New York. Um, I prefer to make fun of New Jersey. Well, most it's just people more fun. do. The lighthouse has a history of odd occurrences: doors opening and closing on their own, phantom footsteps, hiding of coffee cups. Uh, sometimes sheets go flying off beds and uh, radios or TVs turning off and on. The mischief would always pick up on clear weather days, and often false foghorns would blare and fishermen might return to find their boats untied from the mooring. Some chores have even been attributed to the mysterious presence. People have found the deck swabbed, windows cleaned, brash polis, and no living person taking the credit for the duties. The occurrences have largely been laid at the feet of a single ghost that has been nicknamed Ernie. So, aw, aw, Ernie of New London. Partial to, partial to Ernie's. <laughs> Ernie's origin is probably the biggest mystery of the lighthouse. Most people believe he was one of the lighthouse keepers from sometime in the 1920s or 30s, and the most commonly believed story is he, he died at the lighthouse. <laughs> after learning his wife had left him for the captain of the Brock Island Ferry. Some say he drank himself to death to numb the pain, or that he got so drunk he stumbled off the roof. Um, others say that he was so distraught he threw himself from the roof. My personal favorite version, because you never let the truth stand in the way of a good story, is that he hung his head out one of the upper windows, slit his throat, letting the blood pour down the side, and then tumbled out, landing in the ocean below. Did he have on his fanciest dress for this? He did not. I, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing not, but if you're going to kill yourself, go out dressed fancy. Well, I told you. I know. Well, I'm saying it's the it fancy dress. It should be policy. And if you find someone dead and they're dressed raggedly, assume it's a murder. I bought my baby a velvet tuxedo yesterday. Unrelated. Go on. Is he suffering from depression? He's suffering from being the cutest thing ever, and now he has a dapper velvet tuxedo. <laughs> when the coast office uh, abandoned Did you just the... say coast office? Did I say coast office? Coast office. <laughs> I might have said coast office. We'll try that again. <gasps> I approve. <laughs> when the Coast Guard abandoned the lighthouse to automation in 87... Um... I guess that makes more sense, but it's less fun. Uh, one of the office personnel was so eager to be rid of Ernie in the lighthouse, when they finally got their transfer, they wrote, quote, Rack of slow torture, Ernie's domain, hell on earth, may new London ledges light shine on forever, because I'm through. I will watch it from afar while drinking a brew. So cheers to that, I guess. Gross. <laughs> the... 87 conversion automation seemed to upset Ernie, though. Uh, he'd often scatter papers around on desks, and uh, was also known to move the beds around during the process. Well, he was probably lonely. Well, he wasn't particularly lonely. Uh, the whole place was taken over by the uh, New London Maritime Society, and they hold regular tours out there, and they have museums displays. And uh, there's even a room designated as Ernie's at the foot of the spiral staircase up to the light deck. There's been a ton of... Uh, Ghost hunting. I don't know what to Expeditions? Yeah, ghost hunting expeditions <laughs> to the lighthouse. Uh, and, and a lot of people basically try to figure out who Ernie is and why he's there. We've got a ghost psychologist and his medium wife. Uh, they visited the lighthouse and claimed Ernie's real name was John Randolph. No, right. I'm pretty sure that means they just read the Outlander series. Could be. I don't know. Is that... Just trust me on that. All right, I'll trust you on that. But no record of a John Randolph ever working there exists, so... Yes. Maybe he got warped back to 16th century Scotland, or whatever that show is. This psych unnamed psychologist and his wife are also the ones who originated the throat-slitting story that I prefer oh so much. So they like to have a good time. Got it. <laughs> a uh, medium in 2006 claimed Ernie was the angry ghost goofed i can't talk was the angry the angry gopher <laughs> the angry, <laughs> the angry gopher. 
<laughs> this medium claimed Ernie was the angry ghost, 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 of a maintenance worker who was locked outside as a prank while repairing the roof. Supposedly he fell to his death while trying to scale around the building to find a way in. I mean, there's, there's some logic there, at least. There is, there is. There's one woman who claimed to be the granddaughter of one of the builders said the location had always been haunted. She'd heard stories during construction that it was overshadowed by eerie sounds, vanishing tools, and uh, weird shadows seen darting around the construction site. Can you have a haunted chunk of ocean? Well, here's the thing. About a, a decade before construction even began, there'd been a shipwreck on the underwater ledge the lighthouse is constructed on, or at least its platform is constructed on. Okay. Known as the Black Ledge. Apparently, the husband of one of the women who was on board the ship at the time was witnessed walking out along the ledge towards the wreck, keeping the same morose pace up until his head submerged beneath the waves, and he was never seen again. Okay. The plot thickens. It does. Paranormal investigator Christy Kaczynski has visited the lighthouse several times, bringing in her own people and equipment. She doesn't personally take stock in any of the traditional Ernie theories, but she does claim that the third floor is home to a vortex with several benign spirits in it. Though one of the spirits strongly didn't want them to be there. I live near the Oregon Vortex, so I didn't know a vortex could be that um, small. It just took up a floor, but, you know, I have not done a lot of vortex research. When's the last time you've been to the Oregon Vortex? I've never been to the oh, really? Vortex, and I live approximately 20 minutes. One time, yeah, well, you went as a kid, right? I went as a kid with Grandma and Grandpa, but also, um, like, uh, Zane and Karina and I stopped there one time. <laughs> so I if, just think you thought that Zane was... in a vortex sounds like utter oh, nonsense. It was interesting. Well, because you know how Karina was, like, four foot nothing, right? Mm -hmm. There's, like, one area where, depending, there's, like, two sticks across from each other, and you stand on one side and stand on right. the other, and, you know, obviously one person's taller. And then you swap sides and like, you know, it kind of reverses. Like whoever was at the taller stick before is now the taller person. Yeah. And I mean, it was Karina, so she she was still wasn't the taller person, but she was like the same height at Zane <laughs> when she was standing in that position. Um, There is a haunted ghost town in Southern California that has that similar effect. I don't know if it actually has a vortex, but I would heard some ghost stories about it and then sean was like oh yeah we used to go there on field trips all the time and started showing me pictures ah well the thing is zane brought this up because zane's way smarter than anyone ever gave him credit for was he said you know for all i know you could do that same thing on any hillside it would work we just haven't tried it <laughs> fair <laughs> but like you know, as someone that's lived in Southern Oregon for a large chunk of their lives, I do think there is something to the vortex. Well, that's probably another story for a different day because I, shit is batshit crazy around here. Oh, yeah. Carrying on. Okay, back to the uh, London Ledge, though. It was visited by the Ghost Hunters. Um, it was in the second season of the show's first incarnation. Like Taps? Yeah, Taps. They didn't find anything, but, and I watched the episode a few weeks ago. This was during the period of the show where they had some team members who were more interested in making a big find than they were in actually honestly interpreting the evidence they had at hand, so it was kind of a, a bust. They really didn't find anything of value when they visited it. <laughs> but despite that, though, I mean, the lighthouse has such an iconic look, it still appeared in a lot of their advertising and publicity photos. I am... Um have Ghost Hunter Season 3 Part 2 on DVD. I have like a couple compendiums, like best of type stuff. I bought this one solely for Northern State Hospital, but <laughs> yeah, that's not on here. I have like the first three seasons of Paranormal State on DVD. Waverly Hill Sanitarium is on here, though. <laughs> so that's uh, what I turned up on the new London Ledge Lighthouse. Like I say, lots of tiny little things happening, but no major occurrences. Nothing, like, super angry, at least. No, I, I mean, mean, it sounds like Ernie's a good guy, man. Like, he's the kind of ghost you want to keep around. Sure, he pulls some pranks every now and again, but if he's also taking care of the lighthouse, then, you know, God bless him. I mean, I'm kind of curious, like, what the statistics 
is on regular, like, unhaunted lighthouses versus haunted lighthouses. Because I've heard, like, <laughs> other haunted lighthouse stories. Almost every lighthouse has a haunted story that I can think of. Yeah. So, like, are just there? Are they just routinely haunted? Maybe. Because I've, you know, there's quite a few lighthouses on the Oregon coast, and I've been to a few of them and have had reoccurring nightmares about one, which I came to realize after doing some research with Hasita Head Lighthouse in Florence, Oregon. Mm-hmm. I don't know a lot about it, but it, it was not friendly in my nightmares, but. You can go stay there, and I believe there's a campground, so that's on my to-do list. Yeah, there is. The kids and I went there a couple years ago. We stopped by there, but unfortunately we got there after the tours closed, so we didn't get to go up inside of it. Because, yeah, I definitely had nightmares about a white lady, and I know it's haunted by a gray lady. I think it was like the old lighthouse keeper's wife, but I don't know the details, so that might be something we yeah, it was uh, that's on my research list, but I have not got to it yet. There's also some other Oregon lighthouses. Where's my? And like I know the Hasita Head Lighthouse is the sister of the Umpqua River Lighthouse, mm. but I just you know we grew up on the Umpqua River, so I kind of tend to just store those facts. Uh, the Yakima Bay in Newport, that one's haunted. Tillamook Lighthouse is supposedly haunted. I think there's one down toward Reedsport, but I forget its name. Actually, I'm trying, maybe to see the head I did go to as a kid. I remember going to one and getting a button that said, I survived climbing the stairs at some lighthouse, and I don't know what happened to that because it was, like, ridiculously high. <laughs> but I was in shape then, young and in shape, <laughs> back when I used to run stairs for fun. <laughs> so we have a new drink to go with the new London Ledge Lighthouse. Uh, what's that called, Katie? Uh, we're calling it the New London Old Fashioned. I guess you could call it the Old Fashioned New London, but I think New London Old Fashioned really has a nice ring. That works. And that, if if you're getting married, this would be the kind of beverage that covers two of your um, basics for something old, something new. And, I mean, we could always make it disgusting and put some blue curacao in it, really take it, and something borrowed, you could use someone else's straw. <laughs> Wedding planning done. Let's not do those last two parts. <laughs> it's dead. Let's just have the drink as prescribed. <laughs> I'm just here to solve problems, okay? <laughs> I make the drinks, I solve the problems. I don't know what else you want from me. All right, how's, how's this drink come together? Well, you know, if we're going to, you know, gush blood down the side of a white building, we might as well do something a little graphic. So, me, liking whiskey, went with a... Uh, it was kind of a play on an old-fashioned, very simple, but a very delicious drink if done properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a sugar cube. We're going to dash some bitters on it. Okay. Dash is the technical term. I'm pretty confident. Um, <laughs> once we dash the bitters on that, we're going to throw a little splash of soda or water in there. I know old-fashioned purists say you're supposed to use still water, but I'm a bubbles girl, so I'm going to use soda water. <laughs> and then we're going to crush that up with a muddler, top with ice, and we're going to top with two ounces of bourbon. I'm going to throw a good cocktail cherry in there. If you are putting those neon, don't even count as food, maraschino cherries in your old-fashioned we need to talk about your life choices. <laughs> you probably are fine drinking a well whiskey Manhattan, and this is not acceptable as an adult. <laughs> if you make a, a house payment, <laughs> you should not. You be make a house well. payment. We are not drinking well whiskey around here. Like <laughs> it is not acceptable. What kind of cherries did I? I got some nice cherries yesterday. I got some Amarino cherries. That's the right word, right? Amarina cherries. Amarina. Yeah, they're Italian. Mm -hmm. They Italian. So they're a small sour, more sour cherry. Not that that matters. Anyway, once we have this drink, we're gonna toss a cherry in there. I prefer a large ice cube. They make they're called whiskey rocks for a reason, but um. For the love of God, please don't try to shake this drink. <laughs> That's a different... We'll talk about that later. We don't shake whiskey. Fun fact. You shake whiskey, I'm going to judge you. 
Um, we are going to then typically you're going to garnish an old fashioned with a piece of orange rind, maybe an orange slice. We are going to use a blood orange wedge and we're going to squeeze that bad boy, drop it in. You could squeeze some extra blood orange juice in there if you're feeling fruity. So, and then the red just kind of soaks and distributes through the drink. Yes. Like the blood coming down the lighthouse. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Blood, blood, blood. Blood and gore. Blood, blood, blood. You know the opening sequence to Dexter? <laughs> kind of where we're going with that, but in like a more charming bourbon fashion. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you could definitely do this with a rye whiskey, but I just think a bourbon's going to work better with the flavor of the blood orange. Blood orange is a tartar orange for those of you that have not tried it. And it is currently blood orange season. They really start perking up around November. So, so now's the time. time. Now is the time. <laughs> this is the hour. This is the time. Get out of my head. Sorry. <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Booze and Spirits podcast. I said it correctly first try. If you <laughs> if you enjoy this uh, episode uh, or the show in general, please tell your friends. We're available on most places that you can find podcasts. Apple, Google, Spotify, and the rest. Uh, and you can also listen to us on our website, boozeandspirits.com. I should probably know the website before I start passing it on to people, huh? That, that's why I was not ready to say the website. <laughs> Because I couldn't remember what it was. So we've got that going for us. I just link through Instagram, mm, which is true. at Booze and Spirits Podcast. So that one I remember. That's true. And we are available on YouTube if that's your bag. I know some people use YouTube for their listening preferences. That's Booze Spirits on uh, YouTube, spelled B O O S, and they're only. Oh, God, does that include a video? Hmm? YouTube doesn't vi- include videos of us, does it? No, 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 no. It's just a static background with the audio. Okay, because it would be like... <laughs> I would not I would not just post videos of our uh, podcast without warning you ahead of time. I mean, I put on a bra because I'm going to do this Zoom class later that <laughs> someone's going to see me. <laughs> I was like, I, maybe I should look professional, and then it has migrated to i guess i'll put on a bra because hey, well, this know tank top is so not the most want. coverage oh and there's baby puke on it so i've got that going for me <laughs> our next episode is going to feature cock blocking those sons of bitches sons of bitches what's worse than a cock blocking a cock blocking <laughs> <laughs> all right so till next time Remember to please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. McDonald's. I'm Kate McDonald. That's, I don't know if that was a question. <laughs> I'm Kate McDonald. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. 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 <laughs>